In today's video, I'm going to go over everything you need to know to get started in Photoshop as a complete beginner. So without wasting any more time, let's get straight into it. So in today's day and age, Photoshop is clearly a really, really valuable skill set. In fact, I've been able to build a six figure content creation agency and Photoshop is a huge part of that. So you should definitely pay attention to this video, watch it until the end and master Photoshop for yourself because you're going to be able to even sell this as a skill. So. Once you open Photoshop, this is kind of what you're going to be seeing. So the first thing that you need to know if you want to get started is to click on create new and that's how you can create a new document. And as you can see here, you can set the name of the document, the resolution of the document, the orientation and a lot more also the color mode. So for this document, I'm going to set 1080 by 1350 as the resolution and I'm going to call it Instagram picture because I'm going to edit an Instagram picture for myself and I'm going to click on create. So now, as you can see, my brand new document is created and you're going to be seeing something like this as well when you create your first document. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is import in a picture of mine. So all I need to do for that is to go on my desktop where I have my picture stored. I'm going to drag and drop it right to this document and boom, you can see it's already in there. So uh, if I want to, I can make it bigger or smaller with this thing. If I uh, hold down shift, I can actually adjust the way uh, it is uh, completely so I can transform it like this. Uh, I'm not going to do anything for that uh, right now. So I'm just going to click on this button. But if you wanted to, you could. Now, the way Photoshop is kind of laid out is there are all these different tools right here on the left. These are the ones that you're going to use the most uh, to edit your pictures and manipulate them. And if you are looking for anything that isn't right there on this bar, you can always just go to window and then toggle on and off um, any of these different tools. Basically right here, you can find the history, which is some, which is a tool where you can either go forward or backward with the progress of your image. So if you want to undo something, you can do it right there. Or if you want to go back to a previous uh, place where you were before, then you can do that as well. So that's really useful. And then here you have the color selector and uh, all these different things that you can use. Uh, here you have adjustments where you can do a lot of cool manipulations for your pictures and here you have the different layers which I'm going to go a little bit more in depth into later on in this video. So now first let me go over the most important and most used tools right here. So this first one is the move tool which is something you can use to move anything around, uh, any of the layers, anything uh, really on your picture. Now the next one is the selection tool which is also something that you're going to use a lot. It is something that you can use to, for example, select a part of your picture and then make a selection with it, um, like the name suggests. And for example, if I wanted to just copy and paste this part of the image, I can just click on Command C and Command V. And uh, you can see I just uh, made another layer right here. And now I have this separate part as well. And uh, you can see here with this eye icon, you can also toggle on and off any of the different layers, which is a, a pretty, pretty useful thing because, you know, once you have a lot of layers, you might not want to see all of them at once. You might just want to edit a certain layer. So that can be really useful as well. The next tool right here is the lasso tool. Now it is something that you can also use to create a selection. So you can just, uh, press down your mouse or your uh, whatever you're using, your touchpad and make a selection like that. Now, if you want to get, go out of a selection, you can always just click on this one and then click anywhere and the selection is going to go away. The next tool is uh, the quick selection tool, which is something that I personally use all the time to mask out people or mountains or trees or any different objects. For example, if I wanted to mask myself out of this image, uh, I would first need to click on this one, which is the plus. Now, if you're on this plus um, brush, then you're basically adding more things into your selection. And if you go into the uh, minus uh, brush, then you're subtracting things from your selection. So first, I'm just going to um, add myself and you can see how smart Photoshop is at detecting like different edges and all that. Um, you can later on also adjust this, but you can see how it's it's doing a pretty good job at selecting just myself. That is it. I, it did a pretty, pretty good job. Now, if I wanted to do any like really, really precise adjustments to this selection, I could hit Q on my keyboard like this. You can see now all the parts that aren't selected are in red and the parts that are selected are not red, obviously. 
So if you want to make any small uh, tiny adjustments, you can just zoom in on your image, which you can do by either just using your touchpad or clicking uh, common and minus and plus. And uh, basically then you want to um, go to this brush tool or just press B on your keyboard. And then um, if you have black color selected, you're going to be adding more things to the selection by brushing over it. And if you have the white color selected, you are going to uh, take things out of your selection and you can switch between black and white by just pressing X on your keyboard. So once you perfected your selection, you will click on Q again. So now I'm happy with my selection. I'm just going to press common C and common B and you can see how I just cut myself out uh, and uh, now there is no background attached to this image. The next tool is the crop tool. You can use this to crop your image to whatever um, kind of size you want it to. Now the next tool that I use a lot is the spot healing brush. Now this is something that you can use if you want to cover up any imperfections or anything like that. Uh, I don't know what would be the best example in this case but maybe like any small acne or anything like that can be uh, you know easily fixed with this so I'm just going to create uh, a smaller brush size which you can adjust right here uh, on the bottom uh, top uh, even smaller one and then I'm just gonna you know brush over this and you can see how it disappeared it is a really really cool tool to use if you have any stains on a shirt or any acne or anything like that that you want to just cover up the next tool is the brush tool I kind of covered that already with the selection part but uh, basically this is just a the brush tool <laughs> like you can brush over things with it um, it is really really useful you can use it in a bunch of different ways here you can actually select how big you want the size of the brush to be the hardness of the brush to be and uh, the flow as well all these different things um, I think you should go ahead and experiment with it a little bit uh, this alone is just a tool that I could spend minutes uh, like tens of minutes talking on and uh, this is not the video for that but if you want to learn it for yourself you know do some adjustments and see how it works but you can see how I can you know brush over things with it now uh, a really cool tool that you can uh, kind of combine with this and everything else is how uh, the opacity of the layers work. So if you go he right here to the bottom um, right corner and you click on opacity, you can actually change the opacity of these uh, different layers. So you can see how um, it changes the whole thing. Now the next tool is the clone stamp, which is also a really, really useful tool to use. Uh, basically with this, you can kind of also get rid of anything on your image or cover things up. Um, so for example, if I wanted to make fix my hair on this image, uh, you can see it's all over the place. I would go here and uh, make my brush size smaller. And then I need to click option on my keyboard and then take a, a part of the image, which I'm going to kind of like duplicate on the image. And then you can see, uh, yeah, the, the, the object must be rasterized, that's fine. Uh, you can click okay on that. And then you can see how it kind of uh, just takes a part of the image and uh, lays over on the other part. And, and this is really, really fun to use as well. Like you can see, I already fixed up my hair and uh, I, I just got rid of that. Obviously you would want to do like a much better job at this and take more samples and make it more precise, but uh, you can cover up anything with this. Now the next often used tool is the eraser tool. You can use this to erase any parts of a certain layer. So if I wanted to erase, uh, you know, my head, for example, from this image, uh, I'm just going to uh, deselect the lower layer and just have this one where it's only me. And um, I'm just going to go ahead, select this layer that I want to, uh, you know, erase something from, and I'm just going to erase it slowly. And you can see how I have just erased my head. Um, pretty cool, right? <laughs> the next tool is the gradient tool. So this is something that you can use to create different uh, gradients, obviously. So I'm going to create a new layer, um, which is, which you can do by clicking on this button right here. And uh, if I click on this part, I can make the uh, gradient different color. Um, so let's make this one, for example, green. And uh, then I can just go and um, do this. And then you can see I just made uh, a cool gradient. So this looks pretty modern. If you ask me, I can adjust the position of these. Um, so you can see because I already cut myself out of the, of the frame, I have um, this. 
I can actually make it look uh, something like this, which would be, you know, pretty modern looking and, and kind of cool actually. So uh, yeah, you can use this to create different um, gradients. Uh, there are a bunch of different presets here as well. And uh, yeah, it is also a really useful tool um, to, you know, play around with. Now the next very, very often used tool is the text tool. Uh, basically, all you need to do with this is to create a new layer or select the layer that you want to write on and then uh, press somewhere on the image and then you can basically start writing. So I'm just going to say, um, you know, like um, fashion on this picture. Now I can, um, you know, move this around by clicking comment and T um, on this text and uh, I can make it bigger or smaller, uh, whatever I want really. Then I can also obviously uh, change the order of these. So I'm gonna make myself overlay that text kind of. And uh, you can select this text and change the font um, to anything that you want to change it to. And boom, you can see I just changed the font. That, it, that is how simple it is to use. You can change the color of the text or anything, really. You can do whatever you want with it. That's one of the reasons why Photoshop is so great because there are so many ways to manipulate your image and uh, create amazing art. So the last thing I want to cover right now of the tools is the um, different shape tools. So you can have a rect rectangle tool, a rounded rectangle tool, ellipse tool, polygon, uh, line, whatever. There are so many different shapes and, and uh, things that you can use. Uh, and you can see that you can select the fill here. Um, so with the rectangle tool, it's, it's basically going to be like what the shape is filled with. You can also create, have a stroke if you want to or, 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 if, or you can have no stroke. And, um, and yeah, basically you just go ahead and uh, that's how e easy it is to create a different, um, re any re rectangle types. And, and this is the same way the other uh, shape tools work as well. Okay, so the next thing I quickly want to go over is blending modes. So on this image, I want to add uh, a lens flare to it. So I actually downloaded this cool lens flare uh, image from Google. So I'm just going to drag and drop it on top of my um, picture. And uh, I'm going to actually make this be the tr top layer so it overlays everything else. I'm going to press Command T and uh, resize it so it's a little bit bigger. And I want the um, lens flare to kind of come in something like this, like it was uh, the sun. And then I'm going to place this layer right here. And then next I'm going to go here to blending mode and then you can see how uh, it works with the different uh, blending modes. So for example, with uh, lighten or screen, it blends in pretty well. So I'm going to select screen, maybe make it a little bit even bigger. And uh, you can see how, how it added like really cool, cool lens flare effect to it. Now, if I want to soften the edges of this, I can just use uh, my eraser tool, make the hardness lower. And you can see if I turn it into a smart object, I can kind of, uh, you know, take out parts where I don't want it to have it. And boom, that is how simple it is. I just added a cool lens flare to the image and made it a lot more exciting in my opinion. Another thing I quickly want to go over is um, the adjustments. So if I want to, for example, make myself a little bit more contrasty or brighter on this image, I'm going to click on this layer that I uh, want to adjust it. And then I can uh, choose any of these uh, different adjustments. So you can change the hue or saturation of it, uh, exposure, vibrance, anything like that. Um, so I'm just going to create a curve uh, here and uh, create an S curve to make it a little bit brighter and more uh, contrasty at the same time. And you can see how this adjusts layers that are under it. So I can uh, on and off it and see how it changes the contrast of the whole image. But if I only want it to uh, adjust one uh, layer that is under it, I can uh, right click on it, create clipping mask, and you can see now it only adjusts my face and my uh, masked out self. Now I'm going to go over blending options really quickly as well. So select the uh, layer that you want to change the blending options of. And this is a place where you can do a bunch of cool stuff with it. Like you can change the stroke um, of it. And uh, here you can, you know, make the stroke uh, any size. Uh, you can also do like different um, bevel and embossing here as well to make it look like 3D kind of stuff. 
Uh, I'm not gonna go super deep into it, but I want you to you know play around with it and check it out for yourself. You can do like gradients, overlays here um, on whatever layer you're adjusting, uh, pattern overlays, a bunch of cool stuff. And one of my favorites is the drop shadow, which you're probably going to be using a lot. And uh, you can you know adjust the angle of the drop shadow, the distance of the drop shadow here, the size of it. Uh, the opacity of it and you can see how I created this cool looking text uh, by just adjusting a, a couple uh, blending options. Now that you have your masterpiece ready, let's go over how to actually export this image. So, so you're going to go into file, save as, and then you're going to go save on your computer and then you will select wherever you want to um, save it. You can name it here and you can select the uh, format here. So you, I'm going to use JPEG for this one and then I click save. I can choose uh, what kind of quality I want it to be. I'm going to uh, press on the max quality and okay. And then boom, that is basically all there is to it. You can see now my image is right here. Uh, and saved on my desktop. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to drop a like below and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And I will see you guys in the next one.